Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. In case you guys are new here, welcome. My name is Erin and I love to do all things crochet, knitting, fiber art related. So really quickly, I just wanted to show you guys the materials that I will be using for today's tutorial. First and foremost, the yarn that I'm going to be using, I've never used this before, but I really like this blend because it's actually 60% cotton and 40% acrylic. This is the Karen Cotton Cakes. And I have it in this really gorgeous colorway. What I like so much about this yarn as well is that this is actually labeled as a number three lightweight or DK weight yarn. So go ahead and pick out your yarn accordingly. On top of that, I will also be using this handy dandy 4.0 millimeter crochet hook. Although the yarn suggests a 5.0 millimeter, I do want my stitches to be nice and tight because we don't want anything poking out, popping out. So we've got our 4.0 and we've got our light number three DK weight yarn. Other than this, you'll probably just need some scissors, maybe a darning needle to weave in your ends, but this is essentially all that we're going to need for today's tutorial. So let's go ahead, sit on down, and start handcrafting this gorgeous and simple crochet bralette. All right, so let's go ahead and get started on this crochet bralette. Again, I have my lightweight number three DK weight yarn, and I also have my cute little four millimeter crochet hook. To begin, I'm gonna start off with my standard slip knot. So just make your little slip and insert your four millimeter crochet hook. So from this point, I'm actually gonna start working from the band upwards on this top. So to start off, I'm actually gonna have a chain of 10 plus two for turning. And of course the chain two never counts as a stitch. Here is my 10th chain. And of course I need two more to start off my row. So I'm going to be using double crochets for the entirety of this ribbed band. So to start off, I'm going to yarn over and skip the first two chains in my row and insert my hook into the third chain. So this is going to count right here as our first double crochet. So there is our double crochet and here is our chain two that we're always going to ignore at the start of our row. So since this is our first double crochet, again, I'm going to yarn over, find the next chain, insert and pull up a loop. You should have three on, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. So I'm going to repeat this eight more times and finish out my row with double crochets. And coming up here to the very last chain in my row, this is my 10th double crochet. So this is what your piece should look like so far when you're starting out. Let's go ahead and start on row two of this ribbed band, always going to chain two at the start of our row. And again, never ever count that as a stitch. So to start on row two, I wanna add just a slight bit of ribbing to this band. So what I'm going to do is work with those double crochets again, but I'm going to pick up only the back loop for the entire row. So instead of picking up both of those top loops, I'm only picking up the back one and then just work your double crochet like normal. So there is the first one. Again, I'll bring you in nice and close, finding the next stitch here and only picking up that back loop. And just repeat this for the entire row. And when you get to the very last stitch in your row, you're actually gonna wanna pick up both of those top loops just so that you have a more straight edge because sometimes only picking up that back loop on that last stitch can kind of cause a little bit of like a stretch or a gap. That is my ninth double crochet. And now that we're here at the 10th and last stitch, like I said, go ahead and pick up both of those top loops because we want our edges to be nice and clean and just finish out your double crochet. So as you start to work more rows, you'll start to see this very slight bit of ribbing, which is exactly what we want. We don't want anything too drastic. So to go ahead and start on row three, chain two and turn your work. And for row three and the rest of this ribbed band, we're just going to be repeating these same steps from row two. So I'm going to yarn over and find the back loop only on my first stitch in the row. Make sure that you guys don't forget to pick that one up because again, the chain two does not count as a stitch. So always make sure you're grabbing that very first one. And again, yarn over, find the back loop. 
and place your double crochets. So again, I'm really just going to be repeating this back loop only double crochet with the 10 stitches in the row over and over and over until this ribbed band is long enough to stretch around my lower bust. So I'm just gonna to continue to repeat row two over and over until this piece is long enough for me to hold it up to my body, stretch it around my lower bust area and double check that it fits me correctly. All right, so I'm back and I have finished up the ribbed portion for my body size. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fold it in half, but like I said, you want to crochet this to the correct length of like your bust or your upper torso area. So the way that I go about this is I will literally stretch this just a slight bit to check to make sure that's going to stretch and fit onto my body properly. So at this point, I have actually crocheted a total of 48 rows, again, with those back loop only stitches. And here after 48 rows, I can go ahead and just attach this band in the round. So what I'm gonna do is take the piece that I've just been working on and place it up against the other edge. And then to go ahead and connect these two panels in the round, I'm actually going to be picking up the front loop only on the piece facing closest to me. And then of course, pick up the very first chain space from the very beginning of your row and just simply slip stitch like so. So again, I'm gonna pick up only that front loop and then pick up the chain space and just close it off like this and repeat this front loop only connect for the entire 10 stitches. All right, and here is my last stitch in the row. So now my piece is officially joined in the round and this is what the right side of our work looks like. So let's go ahead and start working on the body section of this little bralette. So what I'm gonna do here at the very start of my row, I'm actually going to chain one and turn my work inside out because I want this little seam here hidden on the inside. So now here for row one of the body of this bralette, I'm actually gonna start placing single crochets all across the very top of this ribbed band. Now I don't have like a specific method on where I place my single crochets, but I do just like to find open gaps and open sections like right here to place my single crochet. And on sections right here where I either have the double crochet or the chain space, I'm just going to push my hook inside and place another single crochet. And as you're adding single crochets, you want to be adding in multiples of four because we're gonna have the front section and the back section divided. So whatever you do as you come to the end of your row, just make sure that you have added a multiple of four single crochets. All right, so I've just finished up row one here of the body. And like I said, I have placed multiples of four. So again, for my body size and this piece that I'm making here, I've actually added a total of 92 single crochet across the top. So let's go ahead and close off this row. It's a little bit hard to see, but my chain one space is right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick it up and just slip stitch my row closed. So that completes row one of my body section. Let's go ahead and start on row two. It's gonna be very simple here. Again, chain one, and I'm actually going to turn my work. So I have my chain one, and now here for row two, I'm just going to be placing one single crochet into the top of each stitch. So there is my first one. Again, I'm gonna look here for my second and I am picking up both of those top loops because I don't want a ribbing. Again, for a single crochet, find your next stitch, insert and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. So I'm just gonna repeat this one single crochet into the top of each stitch all the way across 
my row here. So at the very end, I should still have 92 stitches. So I'm actually just going to be working with this pattern for several rows. I wanna build this up as tall as I can. So this is what your row two should look like for the body. I'm just gonna continue on my way. And once I place my last single crochet, of course, slip stitch it to your chain one space and turn your work. All right, so I have finished up the main portion of the body for this bralette, and this is what she's looking like so far. So here is the back seam of the top, and of course here is the front side. I'll get to these little stitch markers in a second, but for reference, I have completed a total of 22 rows in the round with these single crochets. Again, I was just working one stitch into the top of each stitch, so it's pretty much like a perfect rectangle, and because I know that you guys are going to ask for a little size reference, again, this is lying flat. This is not stretched out at all. Across the bottom, I have about 11 inches all the way here, 11 and a half inches here at the body. And as for height on the body section, I have a total of four and a half inches. Again, that's about 22 rows of the single crochet. So at this point for my body size and my chest size, I'm gonna stop here. And as you guys can see on the back side, I'm just gonna go ahead and tie off my work again. I've just joined here in the round with a slip stitch and I'm just going to finish off this row and tie off a knot. So to go ahead and get started on the little slanted slope neckline here, I need to divide my work directly in half. So I have 92 stitches, and when I divide that in half, I end up with 46 stitches. So I've just placed these two stitch markers here on both of the corners of my work to indicate 46 stitches in total here on the front panel. I'm actually going to choose to leave off a significant amount of stitches here at the very center of my work. And this is gonna mark here the space that I'm not going to be placing any stitches in any longer. So at this point, I have 46 stitches. And just for my body size and my liking, I have chosen to leave off eight stitches here at the very center of my work. So when I subtract eight Eight stitches from my half of my work I have 38 stitches left so that is going to indicate the amount of stitches that I can still work into so again because I have one boob and one boob I'm going to divide this in half again and I end up with 19 stitches in total so just working from that very first stitch where I've placed the edge of my stitch marker I'm going to count out 19 stitches and place a stitch marker into that 19th stitch. And likewise here on the other corner of my work, starting from the stitch where my marker is, I'm going to count out another 19 stitches and place that stitch marker right into that 19th stitch. So we can go ahead and get started on the first little triangle cup or slanted cup, if you will. I've already gone ahead and attached my yarn right into that very first stitch space, and we can start working on row one. And the pattern that I'm going to follow here for row one of the cups is I'm going to work one single crochet decrease at the very beginning of my row and two single crochet decrease here at the end. So let's go ahead and just get started on that now. I'm going to pull up a loop, and again, this counts as my first stitch. And to work that decrease, I'm going to go right into the second stitch in the row, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through both. So this is a little funky here at the very start because I have to pull up a loop, but this is actually going to count as a decrease. So at this point, I can just go ahead and work one single crochet into the top of each stitch. And I'm going to stop when I have four single crochet left. All right, so I'm coming up here to the end of my row. And as you guys can see, I have one, two, three, and four stitches remaining on the inner portion of my bra. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and work that two single crochet decrease. So I'm going to insert my hook into the next stitch and pull up a loop. And now at this point, I'm actually going to insert my hook into the next stitch. So go ahead and pick up that next stitch and pull up a loop and then yarn over and pull through all 
three. So there is my first decrease. And again, with two stitches remaining, I'm gonna work a second decrease. Yarn over and pull through all three. So this is what row one of the cups looks like. Let's go ahead and start working on row two. Of course, chain one and turn your work. And now the pattern for row two is actually gonna change up just a little bit. So again, because I'm on the inner portion of the bralette, what I'm going to do is start my row with one single crochet decrease. So for row two, I'm only placing one single crochet decrease at the start of my row. So work into those first two stitches and finish that out. And that is the start of my row. And now for the rest of row two, just simply place one single crochet into the top of each stitch. All right, so I'm coming up here to the very end of my row. And I still have one stitch remaining. It looks a little bit funky because we had that really interesting decrease at the start of our row. So I'm just gonna pick that one up and work a regular single crochet at the end. So that is the end of row two. Let's go ahead and start working on row three. So for row three of these little cups, I'm actually going to be repeating the same steps from row one. So here on the outer portion of my work, I'm going to work one single crochet decrease. And when I come to the very end of my row, I'm going to be working two single crochet decrease in a row. So let's just go ahead and show you that really quickly. I'm going to pick up my very first stitch in the row and work a decrease into the second stitch. And there is our decrease right here. Go ahead and work one single crochet across your row until you have four stitches remaining. So again, I'm coming up here to the very end of row three. And as you can see, I have one, two, three, and four stitches remaining. So I can go ahead and work those two single crochet decreases. And again, make sure that you pick up that very last stitch in the row. It might be hard to see because there is a decrease on the row prior, so the work kind of slants a little bit, but make sure that you're counting stitches and picking it up. So this is what the end of row three looks like, and let's go ahead and show you row four really quickly. So again, the pattern for row four is going to be one single crochet decrease at the start of our row and no decrease at the end. So let's go ahead, pick up that first stitch, pick up the second stitch and decrease and then work one single crochet for the rest of the row. So at this point in our pattern, we have enough of this steep slope here on the inner neckline that I can stop placing the two single crochet decrease in a row. And now I'm only gonna be working one single crochet decrease on the inner portion of our work. So to work on row five, I'm gonna start off our row like normal and place one single crochet decrease into the first two stitches and then work one single crochet across your row for row five here. And stop when you have two stitches left. All right, so at this point, at the end of row five here, I have one and two stitches left, and I'm just gonna work that one single crochet decrease. So pick up that very last stitch in the row and finish out your row with one decrease. So that is the end of row five. And now the pattern for row six, again, it's going to remain pretty much the same from before. I'm going to work one single crochet decrease on the inner side of our work. So work that decrease into the first two stitches. And then again, work one single crochet back across your work. So there's no decreases here at the end of our row for our even numbered rows making sure that I pick up that very last stitch in the row. And let's go ahead and work on row seven. And I'm just gonna repeat that same step from row five here for row seven. So again, I'm gonna start off my row with one single crochet decrease. There is my decrease. 
And again, work one single crochet across your little cup here until you have two stitches remaining. So our work is getting smaller and smaller here at the very top, which is exactly what we want. And again, here at the end of row seven, I have one and two stitches remaining. So I'm going to work that single crochet decrease. And that is the end of row seven. So let's just go ahead and repeat this new pattern a few more times because we want to make our straps a little bit tinier than what we have right here. So again, for row eight, we're working back from the inner portion of our triangle. Always start off your row with one single crochet decrease. And then place one single crochet back. So that is row eight finished. So we're getting so close here to the finish line, but I hope you guys can see that we have that really gorgeous slanted or slope neck style. Let's go ahead and work row nine just the same. Start off with one decrease at the start of your row. I'm gonna work one stitch because I only have three stitches left. And now with the two stitches remaining, work your decrease. So that is the end of row nine. So if I set my work down, you guys can really see that gorgeous style. And now at this point, I actually have three stitches remaining in my row. So I'm gonna stop with my decreases here and simply work one single crochet into each stitch for the entire row. And that is essentially going to give us a very long rectangle or strap that we can tie off at the very end. So at this point here for row 10, again, I'm really just going to be working with one single crochet for my three stitches that are remaining. So I'm just going to pick up that first stitch, single crochet, the next stitch, and the next stitch. So starting with row 10, again, for my body size, I'm no longer working with decreases. I'm just going to be making straps here. And again, the length of your straps is completely up to you. I have a very short body and short torso. So if you guys are taller than me, or you guys would like a longer look, you can definitely crochet more and just add as many rows to this strap as you would like. So let's go ahead and turn this back to the right side. So again, here is the right side of my cup. So at this point, I can just go ahead and set down my work to show you guys what this piece is looking like at this point. And again, at this point in my work, I no longer have decreases. So this is just going to become one super long strap. Again, I'm just gonna to continue to add as many rows as I need. I'm gonna size this up to my body, just kind of measure it and stop adding rows when the strap is long enough. But now that you guys know how to work that little pattern, I'm gonna go ahead and move on over here to the other edge of my work. But again, once you attach your yarn to this stitch marker spot, right here. You're just going to be following that same exact pattern that we have over here. It's just going to be mirrored because now we're going to be starting on the inside of our work. But again, we're just going to be placing that one single crochet decrease right here and two decreases on the inner portion of our work. And again, just following that same step to get more of this slanted pattern. I've just finished up crocheting my two straps here. And in case you guys are wondering for my body size, I have chosen to crochet a total of 54 single crochets. So again, I have 54 rows here and 54 rows on this strap. So what I'm going to do in order to attach it to my top, I've made sure that here at my very last row, instead of pulling through a knot, I have cut off and left a super long tail because I'm actually going to crochet this onto the inside of my tank top like so. So what I'm going to do first and foremost, I have my little measuring tape here and just right here from the very corner of my top, I'm gonna to measure out about three and a half inches away from the edge and I'm going to place the very edge of my tie strap right here starting at the zero and I'm just going to slip stitch through the back loops only 
with my tie strap and again with my tie strap placed on the outside of my work so this is the inside the wrong side what i'm going to do is pick up the front loop on my project and then go ahead and pick up the back loop only on your tie strap i'm going to yarn over and slip stitch these together so that is my first little stitch again i'm going to pick up the front loop only on my top and pick up the back loop only on your tie strap and slip stitch and one more time because i only have three stitches pick up the front loop on your top and the back loop on your strap and just go ahead and slip stitch those together so now my work is officially joined to my tank top at this point you can go ahead tie off a knot and weave in your end and again here for the other tie strap i've measured out three and a half inches away from the edge of my top i've placed my strap to the right side of my top so facing me this is the wrong side of my work and again i'm just going to pick up the front loop only on the top and my back loop only on the tie strap and just go ahead and slip stitch and now that my slip stitches are complete i can pull through my last loop tie off a knot and go ahead and just weave in your ends on the inside of your work and at this point your shirt is complete and your little bralette is now wearable and before I go ahead and close out this tutorial, I just wanted to take a moment to address larger cup sizes. So if you have an A cup size or a B cup size, I feel like just working straight up in this rectangular form would fit you just fine. But if you have a C, D, or even a much larger chest size, then you most likely will need to add increases on your top in order for this to fit comfortably around your bust. I would highly suggest adding one increase here at this corner and one increase here on every other row and keep track to make sure that you're adding multiples of four by the time that you reach the very top of your bralette section and again if you have an even much larger chest size than me i would highly recommend adding increases on possibly every single row here on the corners and again just make sure that you're adding in multiples of four by the time that you hit the very top i'm loving this karen cakes i think the colorway is gorgeous and it's going to be a new staple of mine